Howdy folks, welcome back to our fifth grade science series. Today we get to start Earth and Space Sciences. So go ahead and make your third section in your science notebook. Remember we started with physical science, we moved to life science, and now we're gonna end this with Earth and Space Sciences. Today we'll talk about rotation and revolution and then some about the sun and the patterns it has in the sky and then we'll end talking about shadows. So really cool stuff today. Let's do it. Science rocks. All right, you might start a new um, section in your science notebook. So we started with physical science topics, and then we moved to life science topics. And now we're on our last topic, which is earth and space sciences. All right, so copy down these 29 vocab words. Remember, they go in ABC order like this. And just come back later and create your own definitions of those words. So go ahead and pause it if you need to finish writing these down. Okay, so the earth, sun, and moon are constantly rotating. The earth and moon are also constantly revolving. Okay, here's the earth and moon. So um, when the earth, sun, and moon spin on their own axis, they are performing this motion called rotation. Okay, so when they're spinning, here's the axis. So here's a picture of the Earth doing it. If they're spinning on their own axis, okay, that's called rotation. Okay, it takes one day or 24 hours for the Earth to make one complete rotation around its axis. Okay, one day. So the rotation of the Earth is responsible for the change between night and day. So when one part of the Earth is rotated toward the sun, it is daytime. And when that same part of the Earth is rotated away from the sun, it's nighttime there. Okay, so the sun and moon appear to rise in the east and set or go down in the west each day. So at midday, the sun appears to be almost directly overhead, okay? But this apparent motion of the sun and of the moon, okay, it's an apparent motion. So it's actually the result of the rotation of the earth on its axis. So when the earth um, revolves, okay, this is revolving here. When the earth revolves, it moves in an orbit around the sun, Okay, an orbit is this elect elliptical um, oval shape around the sun. So the revolution, okay, this is revolution. The revolution of Earth around the sun, okay, Earth around the sun, and the tilt of the Earth's, Earth's axis, see how it's at a tilt, those are both responsible for the changing of seasons. So it takes the Earth one year, or almost 365 and a fourth days um, to make one complete revolution around the sun. Okay, so that's one year. Okay, all of our seasons. Okay, this takes one year. This rotation takes one day. So rotation has to deal with day and night over a 24 hour period. Revolution is one year. So this deals with the different seasons we see. All right, so the sun appears to move through the sky in predictable patterns. So the sun's path has a daily pattern and actually a yearly pattern. So each day, the sun appears to move from east, okay, to west across the sky, right? So during the day, the sun shines so brightly that it keeps us from seeing anything else in the sky most of the time. However, as the sun begins to go down and the night becomes more visible, there are many things that can be seen. So it takes 24 hours to go through one cycle of day and night. 
All right, so let's look more at this daily path of the sun. So the sun follows an east to west path every day. So your directions are north, east, south, and west. Okay, so it rises in the east. At noon, it's about here. Okay, and it'll set or go down in the west. So the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So this motion is due really to the earth rotating on its axis once every day. All right, so let's look at the time of day can be estimated from the position of the sun in the sky. So let's look at this here. Number one, when the sun is at the horizon to the east, okay, the time of day is sunrise. Number two, when the sun is between the east horizon and its highest point in the sky, the time of day is morning, so right here at two. And then number three, when the sun is at its highest point in the sky each day, the time of day is noon, all right? And then number four, when the sun is between the western horizon and its highest point in the sky, the time of day is afternoon. Okay, and then number five, when the sun is at the bottom of the horizon to the west, the time of day is sunset. All right, so I mentioned that the sun follows yearly cycles, and that's due to the Earth's yearly orbit around it and the tilt of the Earth on its rotational axis. So as the Earth orbits the sun, the Earth's axis points in the same direction. Okay, look at its axis right here. It's still pointing in the same direction. So the result is that at some times of the year, the northern hemisphere is pointed toward the sun. Okay, northern, the top hemisphere. So here's the top part. It's pointed more towards the sun here. And at other times of the year, the southern hemisphere is pointed towards the sun. Okay, so at this time, the southern hemisphere is pointed towards the sun. Notice the dates, okay, on Earth um, here, the northern hemisphere from it's June 20th through 21st right here, okay? Think summertime, all right? It's really towards the sun. Look at these dates, December 21st and 22nd, all right? Say it's cold, right? So look at this part of the Earth. It's further away from the sun, so it's colder, the seasons. And in the northern hemisphere, this top part here, in the northern hemisphere, the shortest day of the year, the shortest day of the year is on December 21st or 22nd, the shortest day of the year. Um, the sun also takes its lowest path across the sky on this day. And the longest day of the year is June 20th or 21st. And the sun actually takes its highest path across the sky on this day. So these days are known as the summer and winter solstices. So if you've heard of the summer solstice or the winter solstice, and they mark the first day of winter and the first day of summer. All right, let's look at making a shadow. This is pretty cool. So the length and the direction of shadows can change throughout the day because the earth rotates on its axis. All right, so three things that are needed to make a shadow would be, number one, a light source. Okay, number two, an object to cast the shadow. So the object is this crab. And then number three, a surface upon which to cast the shadow. So here's your surface. I think it's on the sand. Okay, and then you can see it's casting its shadow. All right, so when an object blocks the light, okay, here the crab is blocking the light, that would otherwise um, just reach the sand, reach the surface, a shadow is created in the shape of that object. Okay, so in this picture, the light source is the sun, the object is the crab, and the surface is the sand. All right, so the shadow is on the opposite side of the crab from the light source. Okay, so let's look at the daily patterns of shadows. So as the sun seems to rise, um, travel across the sky and set, light from the sun hits the earth from different directions. So shadows made by the sun get longer, get shorter, or even go away. So the shadows cast by the sun always point directly away from it. 
All right, so early in the morning, a shadow cast by the sun, okay, will point to the west. Okay, here's the sun, here's the object that's blocking it, so its shadow is pointed towards the west. Early in the evening, okay, a shadow cast by the sun will point to the east. So here's the sun, actually now it's evening, so it's in the west. Here's the object blocking it, so its shadow is pointing away, so it's pointing to the east. And noontime shadows will be the shortest shadows of the day. This is because the sun is at its highest point, um, straight up in the sky. Um, shadows cast after sunrise and just before sunset are the longest shadows of the day because the sun is at its lowest point in the sky. Okay, so since shadows move in predictable ways, we can use shadows to tell time. A sundial is a clock that works by using the shadow of a pole in the center of a circle of numbers that stand for the hours in a day. So the pole's shadow moves around the circle as the sun is in different positions during the day. So the picture shows students studying a sundial and the pole's shadow is moving in the direction shown by the red arrow. All right, please make sure to take the time to watch these three videos, more about the Earth's rotation and revolution, and then a video about following the sun, and then the seasons in the sun. So as you're watching, enjoy and make notes. All right, let's do some practice questions. Direction, select the correct sun position. Okay, so is the sun position going to be here, 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 or here? Okay, so which position would the sun need to be in order to make the groundhog's shadow look the way it does in the picture? Okay, so where would the sun be if the shadow is in this direction? Okay, so a shadow is created when an object blocks the light from reaching a surface. Okay, so the location of a shadow depends upon the location of the light source. So the shadow of the groundhog appears um, diagonal to the left of the groundhog. So the sunlight must be coming diagonally into the right of the groundhog. Okay, so the groundhog is blocking the sunlight. Okay, that would be going through it diagonally. So the shadow is created in the shape of the groundhog this way. So the position of the sun would be D. Number two, if you lived at point A right here in the diagram, what time of day would it be? Okay, if you lived at point A, here's the sun, here's the earth, you live right here, here's the earth's axis. Okay, so in the diagram, point A is located on the bright side of the earth, right? It's right by the sun. So this means if you lived there, okay, it'd be closest to the sun, it would be daytime. And even look how the earth is shaded, okay, it's lighter shaded over here and darker shaded over here. Okay, so the sun is hitting this side at A, so it's daytime. It would be dark. It would be nighttime over here at C. All right, so your answer is daytime. Number three, Marty created a design idea for observing how a shadow changes throughout the year. So for his design, he needed an object that did not move. So he could use the school's flagpole. All right, he measured the flagpole's shadow on the first day of each month at exactly 9 a.m. So Marty's data is shown in this table. What is the pattern in the data Marty collected? So we've got each month from August to December, and at 9 a.m., the shadow um, was this many feet. Okay, so let's look at your answer choices and see what you think. So based on these measurements, Marty recorded in the table, the flagpole's shadow got longer each month as autumn, or fall, turned into winter. OK, 
Okay, look at your autumn, fall, your August, September, and then you've got October. Now it's starting to turn into winter. It's getting longer. All right, so if we look at our answer choices, that would be C. The flagpole's shadow got longer each month as autumn turned to winter. Number four, a blank is the time needed for Earth to complete one rotation around its axis. Okay, we're talking about rotating around its axis. All right, so the Earth spins all the way around its axis once every day, okay, or 24 hours. Remember, that has to deal with daytime and nighttime. All right, so we're going to go with A, a day is the time needed for Earth to complete one rotation on its axis. All right, number five, last one. An object's shadow changes size and location as the Earth rotates and causes the sun to appear to move across the sky. So look at this picture here. An arrow is casting a shadow on the ground. If the sun is the light source that is causing the arrow's shadow, which of the following is the most likely position of the sun? Okay, would the sun be here, 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 or here? All right, so based on the size and the location of the arrow's shadow, the arrow had to be blocking the sun. Okay, so the one is blocking the sun would be Z. Okay, so the sun light rays are blocked right here by the arrow, so the shadow is cast this way. All right, so your answer choice is D, position Z. All right, y'all, after you have fully mastered this first Earth in Space Science topic, you should be able to create a project, a presentation, an experiment, something to let your teacher know that you can represent data and graphical displays to reveal patterns of daily changes in length and direction of shadows day and night and the seasonal appearance of some stars in the night sky. Bye.